when the banks and the institutions are buying and selling. We have a few more seats remaining for this half-day class on market timing. Whether the markets are going up, down, or sideways, you could generate income in all three types of markets to get educated and learn how for free. Uh, give us a call right now. This class is normally valued at $1,000. You receive two passes for both you and a guest. You also receive a home study course that's valued at $247. To reserve your seat, give us a call right now. You can do this. You know, our youngest student who's ever came in and learned how to do this was 13. Our oldest student is 94, James Blyner. He's a World War II veteran. They can do it. You can do it. Give us a call right now. 954 668 Two five one zero nine five four six six eight two five one zero. And I want to spend the last few minutes talking about how to protect your money. Because listeners, if you have money in the markets now, whether it's your four hundred one k's, IRAs, TSPs, four hundred three b's, trading accounts, if you do not have any forms of risk management, if you're not using stop orders or options to protect your positions, you are naked in the markets. That's essentially driving a car with no brakes. I mean, think about this, listeners. If you're driving a car with no brakes, what's going to happen eventually? You're going to crash. And for those of you who don't know, you know, stocks don't always go up. They go down. And, you know, the original Dow 30 stocks, you know, can anyone guess out there, the original Dow 30 stocks, how many are still in the Dow? Well, the answer is one. And you probably don't know what stock that is, but the only stock of the original Dow 30 stocks that's still in business is GE. All the other ones have gone out of business over time, and they are worthless. And how would that affect your account? I mean, think about it. If you lost 50% in the last market crash, how many years of saving and, and putting money away did that cost you? How many more years are you going to have to work for someone you hate at a job you're sick of? You know, I have a student, Judy. She said this to me years ago. She said, Blake, in the 20s, you find your career. In the 30s, you build it. In the 40s, you're sick of it. And I've always stuck up by that motto for years. But think about it. What if you never had a big loss before on your account? If you never had a big loss before, where would your accounts be today? Well, the answer is probably way up there. You know, Blake, if I never had a big loss before, I I'd probably be retired by now. It's these big losses that kill you. Now, if you want to learn how to change the tide, if you want to learn how to be able to, to protect your money in a downward market, if you want to learn how to make money when the markets are going down, give us a call right now. I have 15 passes for the first 15 callers. This is for a two-part class on how to make money in a downward market and how to protect your money in a downward market. Whether you're a beginner or you have experience in the markets, this class, it's free for you. Give us a call right now, 954-668-2510. 954-668-2510. Two five one zero. You can also text to register. We have classes coming up here on the weekend during the week. You could text the letters OTA to the number four one four one one to reserve your seat right now. Once again, text the letters OTA to the number four one four one one to reserve your seat today. The Traders Edge Radio Show has been brought to you by Online Trading Academy in South Florida. Online Trading Academy teaches how to trade stocks, options, futures, and forex, and how money is made in up markets, sideways markets, and down markets, all with limited risk. Learn at their brick-and-mortar school, real classrooms with instructors who are certified, currently trade, and are profitable. Are you wondering what you can do to make more money, preserve your wealth, or have a better retirement? See how this strategy works. Reserve a seat for the most amazing half-day class on trading. Text to register. Type the letters OTA to the numbers 41411. You can do this. Or call 954-668-2510. That's 954-668-2510. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors.
AM 1470 with even more information you can use. Are you suffering with chronic pain? Tune in for No Bones About It with Dr. Alvin Stein. You'll learn non-invasive techniques that can help you get rid of your pain without the use of harmful drugs or surgery. That's No Bones About It with Dr. Alvin Stein. Tuesday mornings at 11, right here on AM 1470 WNN, South Florida's Health and Wealth Network. No child in Florida deserves to be bullied, and it's up to parents and adults to recognize the signs. I'm Andy Ford, president of the Florida Education Association. Torn clothes, bruises, loss of appetite, mood changes, or a reluctance to go to school, these all could be signs that a child is the victim of bullying. And as parents, as educators, as adults, we have the power to stand up and stop the bullying, fix it, and prevent it. If you're a parent, the teacher, the custodian, the aunt, the neighbor, or the coach, one caring adult can make all the difference. Take the pledge to be that adult at nea.org slash bullyfree. Students in Florida deserve more caring adults in their lives. That's nea.org slash bullyfree. A message from the Florida Education Association. Did you know that there are greater than 1,500 kids in Palm Beach County alleged to be victims of abuse, neglect, or abandonment? Fewer than 80% of those children are afforded a guardian ad litem. That leaves these children with no voice in the court system. Guardians ad litem represent the best interest of children involved in abuse cases. We are information gatherers, advocates, and monitors who visit the child, review relevant records, interview persons involved in the child's life, and submit best interest recommendations to the court. Without a guardian, these children are more likely to languish in foster care. It is time for you to speak up for our county's most vulnerable. Call 561-355-6224 or visit www.galpbc.org for more information. You can make a difference in a child's life. Talk 1470, WWNN, Pompano Beach, Boca Raton, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. AM 1470, WNN, with more of what you need to know. Tune in for the Jill Dane Show, Sundays at 3 p.m. on South Florida's Health and Wealth Network, AM 1470, WNN. Talk 1470 WNN is now available on iHeartRadio. Download it now for free on your app store. And take WNN with you wherever you go with iHeartRadio. Tired of low returns on mutual funds or 401ks? If you wanted to retire today, would those mutual funds or 401ks be enough? If not, learn how to build a better retirement at Online Trading Academy in South Florida. The brick and mortar school where people learn in a classroom setting how to have a better retirement by investing in trading stocks, options, futures and forex, and how money is made in up, sideways and down markets while limiting risk. Learn with our money, not yours. You're taught one-on-one -on -one by experienced pros who currently trade are certified and profitable they show you what they do every day call now to register for a free half-day class on how to invest and make trades for a better retirement call online trading academy in south florida free half-day classes in broward and now in palm beach call 561-674-9800 that's 561-674-9800 561-674-9800 this is Talk 1470. Talk 1470. WNN. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Are you a family caregiver? Are you caregiving for someone who can no longer take care of themselves? Are you overwhelmed? This is Caregiver Solutions Info with Marsha Teal. Marsha will be hosting an hour of true stories and information, tips and updates of the latest research and necessary information in the caregiving field, focusing on you, the family caregiver. An Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert, Marsha has 15 years of hands-on experience at Arden Courts, a leader in assisted living dementia communities here in the U.S. Marsha covers everything you need to know as a family caregiver, especially if you care for a loved one with Alzheimer's disease or other related dementia or chronic illness. 
If you have a friend or relative that is also a family caregiver, call them now. They won't want to miss a minute and let them know they can watch on caregiversolutions.info. And they can listen on WNN 1470 AM in South Florida or nationally on the iHeartRadio app. Now, sit back, relax, and learn from our host, Marsha Teal, as she brings information to you that may just be the caregiving solution you need. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Caregiver Solutions Info. I'm so happy that you could join us this evening. We have a great show planned for you. And this is a program for you, the family caregiver or a professional that wants to learn more about what a family caregiver goes through. It's not easy. Matter of fact, it's very difficult. And so this show is designed to teach, to advise, and for people to learn so that Hopefully, your caregiving task will be a little bit better. And that being said, I want to welcome you to our show, um, whether you're listening on the radio or whether you're watching us live on your computer or your mobile device. I'm happy you could be here with us today. And so today is Tuesday, December the 8th, 2015. And we're going to be hearing from two family caregivers today. They are two wives. Both their husbands have Alzheimer's disease, and they have agreed to come to share, open their hearts so that we might learn. And so it's going to be a very, very um, important show. I'm sure um, at times emotional, and hopefully you will learn and um, have that little bit of insight to either what you're going through and that others have um, also walked that path or perhaps what is down the road for you. And so the more we can learn about caregiving, the more we can learn about Alzheimer's disease, the better off everybody will be. First, though, we have brain boosters. Now, brain boosters is something we talk about every week um, that we are learning how to either maintain our brain or improve our memory something that's going to help us along the way. And so I'm sure you have either experienced or maybe actually had people say to you, I don't know what's going on with me. I can't remember stuff anymore. I'm losing track of my appointments. I completely forgot uh, something that I was supposed to do. And I think I'm going crazy. What if I'm getting Alzheimer's? Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever heard that from other people? Well, if you're an A-type personality and you're working and you have a lot on your plate and you're taking care of a family and you're taking care of children and you have a high-profile uh, you know, job and perhaps you have pets that you're taking care of and maybe elderly parents and especially if you're a caregiver and doing all of that, most likely you're not going crazy. Most likely you're, you don't have Alzheimer's, although it's a good thing to go to the doctor and get yourself checked out. But it might just be something as simple as stress. Because, you know, stress is not good for our body, and certainly it's not good for our brain. How can we eliminate stress? There's lots of ways. We've talked about it on the show week after week after week what things we can do, how do we take care of ourselves. But eliminating stress can be as simple as a two-letter word, and that two-letter word is no. Sometimes we have to learn to say no. It's not easy for some people. You know, we all want to be helpful. We want to do for others. You know, we have that kind of personality. But you put too much on your plate, And it's going to affect you. And if you're a caregiver, sometimes caregivers get wrapped up in doing and doing and doing, and they never have any downtime. They never have time for themselves. And if that describes you, and you are always saying yes, and you're the one that people go to because, you know, you always have been there for them, and now you've got your plate is full, it's overloaded, it's heaping up, it's spilling over, you got to learn to say no, and people will respect you, um, and you're going to be able to take care of yourself and find time. You have to plan time for you. You actually have to put it on the calendar, schedule it, 
You know, you schedule for everybody else. You schedule for your loved one you're taking care of. You schedule for your kids and all their activities and your grandkids and their activities that you're going to go see. And everything is scheduled. But what about scheduling time for you? And the only way you can do that is to say no to things that are going to not give you that time. You know, we all only have 24 hours in a day. Everybody has the same amount of time. But it's what you do with your time that's important. So to help eliminate that stress, start saying no. It's very, very important and uh, practice because uh, it really will help you. So um, keep that in mind. Start saying no. The holidays are coming. Things are getting busier. Uh, a lot more uh, appointments that you know you might want to go to. A lot of social functions, and you, you learn that you can't do everything. Nobody can do it all, be it all, uh, without consequences. And the consequences are to your health and to your mental health, your emotional health, your physical health. It all affects us. So let's uh, make a decision to take care of ourselves this holiday season. And I think everybody will um, be a lot better off for it. So we're going to take a short commercial break. Stay with us, and we'll be right back with Two Wives and Their Story. Make First Choice your first choice for home health care. First Choice is state certified for Medicare covered services such as medical treatment and rehabilitation. Qualified health care professionals come to your home and work closely with your doctor to build a care plan designed to get you back on your feet as soon as possible. Founded and operated by registered nurses, First Choice Home Health is dedicated to providing exceptional home health care. Their highly skilled medical professionals have the knowledge and ability to provide patients quality care. Call First Choice Home Health at 561-296-2770. That's 561-296-2770. And tell them you want them as your first choice. Take a pen and jot down this information. Right from the Heart assists families in finding the right living arrangements for their aging parents. Founded in 2012 by Sharon Agate, Senior Lifestyle Consultant, Sharon has counseled seniors and their families for over 20 years in clinical settings and in independent assisted living and memory care communities. Finding the right community can be overwhelming and time consuming. Right from the Heart takes the stress and worry from you. Sharon will meet with mom or dad and evaluate their needs and lifestyle preferences and create a personalized plan at no cost to you. She will accompany you to visit selected communities and guide you every step of the way so you can be assured you're making a well-informed decision. Call Sharon at 561-374-4696. Sharon's promise to you is in your knowing that her advice will always come right from the heart. You are listening to your host, Marsha Teal, an Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert on caregiversolutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. And we're back. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'd like to thank our national sponsor for making this show possible, Arden Court's Memory Care Community. They are one of the best in the business for assisted living for memory care because memory care is all they do. Arden Courts understands they can help, and Arden Courts not only takes care of the person with a memory loss, they also take care of the caregiver, meaning that they have programs for caregivers, they have support groups, they have educational seminars, and Arden Courts is located all across the United States in over 50 locations. And so we want to thank Arden Courts for being there for the caregivers and for the residents. One of the things that Arden Courts likes to do is to offer the caregiver a free day of respite where you can take time for yourself and your loved one can be in a safe, loving environment, and you can spend the day doing what you need to do, something for yourself, and at the same time, your loved one can get what they need, have some socialization, have some stimulating activities to do, and all the while, it's great for both of you. If you're interested in this free day, it's a, a free day of respite, um, no strings attached. Um, all you have to do is let Arden Courts know by calling their toll-free number, which is 888-478-2410. Tell them you heard about that offer 
on the Caregiver Solutions Info Program, and they'll be happy to explain all the details to you and find a community that's closest to you so you can take advantage of that. So today, I'm so excited to have with us because these two ladies that are here with me uh, Mm -hmm. this evening, both of their husbands have Alzheimer's disease, and they are willing and able to come down and have agreed to share their story, open their hearts. Um, You know, it's not easy um, at all, you know, to talk about a loved one and their problems and the, the struggles that we go through, but to share it to everyone else and to the world and the strangers. I, I want to applaud both of these ladies that are here with us today. Um, so we have Carol Farrell and we have Lorraine Abel. Mm-hmm. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. So now I know both of your husbands are pretty close in age. Um, okay. Eric is 75 and your husband is Harv and uh, he's 78. Okay. So they're about three years in difference. And uh, so I also know that both of them were very, very... Um, intelligent, successful men. And I, Carol, uh, your husband, yeah. uh, you met him when you were an airline attendant and right. he was a pilot and yes. uh, he flew for a commercial airline for mm-hmm. many years. And before that, he was a pilot in the uh, Marine, Corps. Marine Corps. All right. So, uh, you know, he had a great career and yeah. you um, sound like you had a fairy tale romance <laughs> there and, and all of that. That was wonderful, yeah, you know, meeting it's... meeting in the air. Yes, and that's yes, great. It and, was. It was. It, it was very romantic. Yeah. It was very romantic. It's good to have those memories. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, that's what we're all talking yeah. about. We want to keep our memories as long as we can. And mm-hmm. and, um, and then for you, Lorraine, I know Harv um, also was very successful. He was a professor, and he studied research, and he was a researcher on Parkinson's disease. Correct. And so how did you all meet? Uh on the basketball court. <laughs> okay, good. All right, that sounds exciting. Um, uh, he played basketball with my brother, and he, I w- used to go and watch my brother play, and Harv was there, and anyway, one thing led to another. <laughs> wow, so you uh, also have known him for a long, long time. So yes. You've been married for quite a while. How many years married? 42. Congratulations, Ooh, yeah. Carol. How about you? Uh, 35. Congratulations. That's <laughs> awesome. So, ladies, um, you know, I, I think that it's very difficult um, going through what you're going through, but to come and share your story uh, is not easy at all. And, you know, the two of you um, actually met through the fact that your husbands have mm-hmm. Alzheimer's. Um, befriended each other Mm -hmm. and you know that's what it's all about is befriending people helping um, supporting each other so now you've two come together to team up to help support all the other caregivers who may be listening to us this evening and I think that is awesome so my first question to both of you is that did you ever think in a million years that this would happen? Uh, I did not. (laughs) My husband's family history did not include Alzheimer's. It included heart disease and cancer. So it was never on the radar for you. What about you, Carol? Neither neither mine. There's nobody. No history. No history. And you had no um, experience in the family with taking care of anyone, any grandparents with Alzheimer's? No. The story that Harv used to tell about his grandmother made me think that she may have had dementia because he would say that his his grandmother lived with his parents and uh, his brother and himself and his mother would never let her cook. And all she did was sit and stare out the window. Ah, so just yeah. from that so just that description. little description yeah. mm-hmm. made me think. Well, maybe that's the connection. Okay, but it but it wasn't yeah. anywhere in the history of your family. So you no. never thought that this would ever ever no. happen. You never even gave it a thought that it could because no. you know people are talking more and more about Alzheimer's, and you know you just don't even think it's going to happen to you. So. When you got that diagnosis, when that actual diagnosis came, the official diagnosis, what was your first reaction, Carol? <laughs> I went on the internet. 
to look it up. The to doctor, s- the the uh, the uh, neurologist, you know, put his hand on my shoulder and said, "I'm so sorry." And I went, "Uh oh, I better go look this up. I don't know what this is." He didn't really give you a good description or explanation <laughs> no. or counseling or anything. No. He kind of left it in your no. lap to yes. go yeah. search on your own. Yeah. I well, mean, they gave they they said they gave him speech therapy and they did this and you know well but no no nobody nobody did anything so it's so, here here's the diagnosis yeah. you know and and yeah. you, you put you no, dropped no. in your lap like a a, a, a yeah. brick balloon and there you were yeah what about you lorraine when you got that official diagnosis how did it was just a confirmation of what i suspected you did suspect <laughs> yes um probably Three, he's been diagnosed five years, but three years before that, I started noticing changes in his behaviors. Like what? Um, he, he would get upset, and he would say that we wouldn't have conversations. And this was a man that was so brilliant that whatever you told him, it was there. And when he couldn't remember a conversation that we had the day before, and that would get upset that, you know, I was mm. hiding things from him. Uh-oh. I just started yeah. saying, this is not my husband. Mm, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, and then as it progressed, the repetition started. He, okay, so he's repeating mm. words or phrases or uh, questions? Questions, <laughs> mostly questions in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so at that point, we actually never had long-term care insurance. And I said, mm, if my suspicions are correct, I better get some of this insurance because we're going to need it. And you did that before he actually went to get diagnosed because yes, you because know if yes. you get diagnosed, there's no way you're going to yeah. get right this. because the underwriting will not allow that. Right. Wow! So you already <laughs> suspected, and it was a confirmation. And and Carol, for you, it was just out of the blue. It was just out of yeah. So so when this happened, when you actually got the diagnosis. What was your first thought, Carol? Um, Mainly disbelief. And after so many people would say, oh, I'm so sorry, I'd be going, you know, I don't, I don't, I I, I don't, I don't, it'll be okay. He's okay. I mean, he looks good. He talks, you know. It was like you, you didn't know why they were saying they were sorry for you. Exactly. And they kept, and so as it went along, I Obviously, you figured learned. out. Uh, yeah. yeah, you learned. But I your learned first thought it. was, "It'll be okay. It'll we be can, okay. This will be fine. Yeah. We'll deal with it. Yeah. it. Maybe it's not so bad." Right. Um, you, that was your very first thought. And how did you feel when um, the doctor actually confirmed your suspicions, Lorraine, and said, "Yes, your husband does have Alzheimer's"? Um, what did you feel then? Did you feel relief, <laughs> or did you feel <laughs> worried? Did you feel angry? How did you feel? No. I didn't feel worried. I didn't feel angry. Um, I think I just said, okay, now what do I have to do to help make not only his life okay, Mm -hmm. but my life with him work so that we would both be happy? Right. So I. And that's where you come to. Mm -hmm. You come to how can I, how can I cope with this? How do I make this? All right. Right. So that being said, were you proactive to learn and do, or did you take a step back and say, well, let me wait and see, and maybe it'll go away. Maybe it it won't be anything I have to take care of. Maybe a little bit of denial going on, which... which, which, (laughs) (laughs) Actually, Harv started doing research on the computer for himself. And so yeah. he started to change his diet to include, you know, the berries that ev- everybody says you need to do this. He he Coconut did coconut oil. Yeah, yeah, the 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 crossword <laughs> puzzles, all the things. So he that, was proactive himself. He, he was proactive himself. Um, 
Right. Obviously, being in the field and the field of yeah. science and, and, and being researched uh, on Parkinson's, which, you know, actually it Parkinson's gets, disease can, it, can it actually can mimic, mimic yeah. dementia. Dementia can be caused, uh, one of the causes is Parkinson's. Um, and, you know, there's lots yeah. of different kinds of dementia and, right. you know, Parkinson-like yeah. dementia and Alzheimer's dementia and there's vascular dementia. But both of your husbands were actually Alzheimer's disease. Was that yes. the official diagnosis? No, mine was not Alzheimer's. It was, uh, uh, what's the... Um, Front, frontal temporal frontal, lobe? Yes. Okay. And um, actually, um, Eric and I, but Eric was the, the driving force. For, we did the clinical trials. Uh -huh. And so we were at uh, North Broward with Dr. Todd and we did... Um, all the, and so we were in a clinical situation, so that um, you know we try. They would, every six weeks I had to go in and answer all these questions, <laughs> and and I was always. Uh, it, it was nice because I never had to worry about his blood pressure or um, they did uh, MR MRIs mm -hmm. and a spinal tap, and and the, he doesn't have the genetic predisposition for the Alzheimer's. And he which, was taking uh, medication for the trial and yes. you didn't know whether it was the yes, real I, well, or the placebo? Well, after six weeks they told you and then they gave you the real trial. But mainly, you know, there's a gene now that I don't uh, clinically I don't really know but, but I could tell my children that in fact they did not have he does not have the gene that predisposes him for Alzheimer's. I think it's so. amazing that both your husbands were proactive in their own um, yeah, care and yeah. health and to going forward to see what they could do to improve yeah. their outcomes. Right. I, I think that's amazing. And, you know, and for you all to be there to support that and, and go through mm -hmm. it. Um, so how many years has it been since your husbands were diagnosed? And I'd like to know what prompted you to actually make that call to a doctor to see what was going on. So, Lorraine, what, what's been going on? How long has Harvey been diagnosed and what led to it? I think maybe you answered that because you suspect, <laughs> yeah, suspected, suspected yeah. and he's, you, know, you wanted to see what, what it was. But how long now has Harvey? He was diagnosed in, in 2010, so it's five years ago. Um, it was really the reason I pushed Harv to make the call um, to see a neurologist was because of my suspicions and, you know, the the uh, the fact that he was just not remembering. And I said, don't you want to know why this problem is happening? Right. And so he finally agreed to, to go and, and be tested. Mm. Sometimes that's not easy because the person that's sick, you know, they're in denial themselves and they're, yeah. they they might get angry and they might say, there's nothing wrong with me. It's you. You're the problem, right? <laughs> no. It's not me. It's what? you. Yeah. I mean, we that hear comes that all later. the time. <laughs> that comes, comes later. later. Yeah. Okay. You know, but, it, but it's hard sometimes to get that person to go to a doctor. They, you know, they're, yeah. they're afraid themselves to of find course. out what it is. Yeah, and so they're going to refuse and you know you can't physically force them to no. do it so in your case you know he went along with it and what about you what well, happened that prompted you I um we moved down here well we've always had a house here but we rented it out but we moved down here and I needed a doctor um, so I went to one of the big groups and said okay well so I went to the neurologist in that group of which I have not been back to but um, <laughs> that's okay <laughs> But anyway, uh, you know, and um, Eric was in denial. He after he got the diagnosis, he said, "That's just crazy. That's us." So, and then we lived with him for a while. And a, and what was your first clue? Numbers, numbers. So he, he used to be could, good with numbers. Yes, he could. He had a spatial. It was sort of like the airplane thing. It was a spatial thing that he could add and subtract and. All the and and um, we had a business, and the secretary called me and said, "Carol, I have no idea what he's saying." And so I would ask him, and he'd say, "Well, it's thirty-two dollars." And I go, "Eric, it's not. It's thirty-two thousand dollars." And he go, "Well, same thing." 
Yeah, sure. <laughs> Same thing. A few extra zeros. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that was, and, and that's little, when you first started seeing yes. the number thing. With, and that in it was the number that kind of got me. That you know, I. And then after the thing. numbers, was that in and of itself was that like your big yes. alarm yes. that said I was uh, right. Got to do something yes. because now he couldn't. I mean, he couldn't work in the business. I mean, he couldn't. You know, if you can't say to somebody, "Well, I'm going to pay you." A dollar fifty. Oh, you mean a hundred and fifty? It, it just was frightening, and I had to take over so much more, which is more stress, which is more. Now he wasn't know. flying. No, he wasn't airplanes flying. at we that a, time, right? We had a we had a, a school bus business mm-hmm. in New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so he had retired from retired being from a from pilot. pilot. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then, thank goodness, because there's numbers in the pilots. Too. Yeah, that would be tragic. <laughs> wow. So mm-hmm. you know, everybody notices things um, in their loved one, and sometimes they don't notice, and other people notice because a lot yeah. of caregivers want to cover up for the person who has some of this memory mm-hmm. loss, and they're they're covering up for them, answering questions for them. Um, but you two seemed like you were right there on the ball. Um, you know, getting with it what you needed to do, getting to the doctor, finding out what was wrong, what do we got to do, what are we going to get help, and how are we going to do this? So, you know, that's that's a good thing. Um, so the lesson there is don't wait, right? Don't yes. wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Uh, get don't wait. Help. Not only that, but you can, there's so many things that we enjoyed. You know, we we did things that I kept thinking, we're not going to be able to do this. You know, I don't know when we're not going to be able to do this, but, you know, uh, simple things. We'd go away for the weekend or, or you know, um, I don't know, d- just silly things that that didn't come around again. Mm-hmm. And if you know early, you can enjoy some stuff that you might not be able to. Exactly. Know. And you can plan and you yeah. have more time to you know, plan for your the remainder mm-hmm. of your life and, 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 and make those memories while you can with yeah. each other and that you have that to hold on to. And that's a very, very yeah. good point. Um, very, very important. So um, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back. Stay tuned with us. Take a pen and jot down this information. Right from the Heart assists families in finding the right living arrangements for their aging parents. Founded in 2012 by Sharon Agate, Senior Lifestyle Consultant, Sharon has counseled seniors and their families for over 20 years in clinical settings and in independent assisted living and memory care communities. Finding the right community can be overwhelming and time consuming. Right from the Heart takes the stress and worry from you. Sharon will meet with mom or dad and evaluate their needs and lifestyle preferences and create a personalized plan at no cost to you. She will accompany you to visit selected communities and guide you every step of the way so you can be assured you're making a well-informed decision. Call Sharon at 561-374-4696. Sharon's promise to you is in your knowing that her advice will always come right from the heart. Do you need the advice of an elder law attorney but perhaps find it difficult or overwhelming getting to appointments? The solution is the Elder Law Department. They bring elder law to you by meeting with you in the comfort of your own surroundings to discuss your personal situation and family needs. In practice since 1994, Heidi Friedman is a member of the Elder Law section of the Florida Bar. She and her team help families with issues that include incapacity and estate planning, asset preservation, veterans benefits, and other legal issues that seniors may face. Call the Elder Law Department at 954-383-1143. 954-383-1143. They bring elder law to you. Arden Courts is not just a place to live. It's a place to call home. Residential living combined with quality caregiving. This is the philosophy behind Arden Courts. Communities created exclusively for individuals with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia who would benefit from a safe and structured environment. For additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides, call 888 478 
1-800-242-2410 to locate a community nearest you. Inquire about our educational seminars, resource library, or support groups, or simply feel free to ask questions you may have about Alzheimer's and related dementias. At Arden Courts, we know, we understand, and we can help because memory care is all we do. Remember, call 888 478 2410 for additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides. You are listening to your host, Marsha Teal, an Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert on caregiversolutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marsha. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. Hi, and welcome back. We're here with Lorraine Abel and Carol Farrell. Both their husbands have been diagnosed with dementia, one with Alzheimer's, one with frontal temporal lobe. And so they're here sharing their story, coming from their heart, how they feel, what they experience, so that we all can learn. And so thank you again, ladies, for being here and, and sharing with us. I'm curious, now we talked about both of these very, very brilliant, successful gentlemen, had great careers, um, being diagnosed now with dementia and, you know, the, the fact that, okay, it's become reality, it's, it's here and now we've got to deal with it. And, you know, we talked a little bit about that. One of the things that happens um, when a spouse is diagnosed with Alzheimer's or other dementia is that not only, you know, you, ha you have to tell your your family, of course, and break the news to them. But then you have to tell your friends. And then it becomes a whole nother ball game because you have other people that you've been socializing with that are people that you spend time with, that you go out with. And I want to talk about how that might have changed for you uh, after the diagnosis and things were progressing and, and getting worse in your husband's. How did that affect your social life? Either one of you want to start? It really didn't affect us too much. We, I'm just blessed with the friends that we have. They, they yeah. have been there every step of the way, um, supportive of us. We, we would go out for dinner, and if he repeated themselves, they were just patient and, and just allowed Harv to say the same thing over and over again um as the disease progressed you know i needed more more assistance if we went out you know for instance taking him to the restroom mm -hmm. because he would get lost getting there and getting back to to a table so one of one of the male you know members of of the group that we would go out with would always say come on, I have to go. So, you know, they would always try and make it easy for him and, and try not to embarrass him. So, um, and even when he played tennis, you know, the guys would just help him keep score, tell him where to stand on the court. So, so they tried to keep things normal for as long yeah. as possible. Right. That's great. You know, yeah. it, 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 a lot of people find their friends don't know what to do or say, so then they kind of go by the wayside and, yeah. and now, you know, you're, you're, you're lost without, without them because you, you need the support. What okay. about you, Carol? How did that work for you? Yeah, um, of course, also, the, the very, very good friends are still there now i mean one was just here for his birthday but um but eric never um he's got such a social he's a, such a social person that you almost don't realize that he's that there's nothing you know that the, he, there's nothing in his brain that he's not because he smiles and answers back to you mm -hmm. so you you don't have that feeling as long as we, we didn't have to have a conversation, he could sit and listen to everybody else. Mm -hmm. And it's even today. So I he's mean, always part of the group. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even part of, even today. Mm -hmm. He could do that. He could you would almost not know anything mm -hmm. was wrong. Mm -hmm. So that part of it wasn't um I pulled back because I didn't I didn't 
I was still watching him, and it was very tense. Mm-hmm. It was very tense. Because are you worried that, okay, what's what's he going to do or say? Yes. Or, or am, am I, how am I going to handle it if he says something inappropriate? Right. Or if well, he, he gets... would walk up to people and start talking to them, <laughs> and they'd be going, what? Do I know you? Know, you? Do I, what, who, what did you just say? Because he can't talk. He can't. Um, it has Articulate. Word salad. Uh huh. Okay. Word salad word is one salad of the things that the, we say when the words are all jumbled all up. Jumbled up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I'd walk the dog, and people would stop and say, "You know, is he all right?" You know, and I'd be go, "Oh, sure, he's fine." Mm-hmm. So it, that part of it is, I think, is it, you're blessed with your with your friends, but it is hard for you because you you tend to pull back inside of you. And you're losing him, and you're losing your social life altogether. So, mm-hmm. did you feel like you had to make excuses for him? Was that difficult? Um, how did mm-hmm. you handle that when you know you were in public? And did you feel that you know it was um, something that invaded your privacy, or mm-hmm. was was it something that you just tried to um, slough off, or did you try to explain to people how did mm-hmm. how did that work for you? I I was always up front because I believe information is knowledge. And so I I felt that if Harv went up to people and greeted them like he knew them, he did the same <laughs> thing. Big, yeah. <laughs> to a total stranger. <laughs> total stranger. Uh-huh. Uh, I would go up and just, you know, take his hand and I would say to them, um, Thank you for being so kind, but but Harv has Alzheimer's, and so he's mm-hmm. just friendly with everyone. <laughs> well, I think that's awesome because, yeah. you know, that, that experience right there, that could have been the first time that other person actually experienced experienced anybody mm. with Alzheimer's and mm. you don't know you don't right. know what people have in their yeah. lives and it could have been the very first experience and what a nice experience here's someone coming up don't doesn't know me and <laughs> hi how are you you know and, and he would friendly. say oh I knew you years ago <laughs> and they're trying to think when was that you know and they're racking their brain and, and you came to the rescue and explained no you don't really know him but he's got this disease and I think yeah. that's a great that's nice. way to, you know, to kind of bridge that because yeah. they say, wow, okay, you know, th- th- this is part of the disease, but, um, you know, this is a nice part of it because there are nice parts and there are not so nice parts, mm-hmm. as you well know. Um, so that, that, that worked out well for yeah. you. So um, I have a more difficult question to ask both of you. And um, let's go with uh, Carol first. Okay. Um, <laughs> now that Eric has lived with this for how many years? Um, it was 2008. Okay. So it's been eight years yes, or so. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously um, dementia is progressive and things change as time goes on. And, you know, you've been there for him day in and day out. What's the hardest Part for you. Mm. Um, yeah, I still love him, and it's sad. It really, is sad. It is sad. Yeah, it's sad. So, sad to see him go through yeah. this process. <laughs> I'm taking yeah, the we, Kleenex out. I told her to get the Kleenex out. <laughs> no, I go and I go. And, and when I see him, I go. I always skip a beat. I go, oh. And then he, you know, doesn't, does some something, you know, silly like he, whatever, from a, 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 a symptom he does, he walks away or he doesn't recognize me or something. It's hard. It's the, it's the what do they call it the long goodbye mm-hmm. you know so mm-hmm. that's the hard part the hard part when he doesn't recognize you yeah. and you're you and know. he has no idea of um, the the aides will come up and say well this is your wife and he'll go I'm not married <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah all right <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, that I'll say something about 
you know, uh, uh, children or grandchildren or something, and he'll go, I don't have any of those, do I? You know, so. Mm -hmm. But that's the hard part is that no matter, you still care for them. You still, even though now that he's in a community that cares for him, and I feel comfortable about that, um, I still care. I mean, you know, now I can't. It's a different kind of caring yes. because he's at a distance. and I, But it's nice that I don't have to worry about him, you know, whether he's shaved or all the day of the in and day, the day out, day the heavy out lifting, yes. so to speak. Yeah. And, and so. now you can go, you know, they always say you go from being a caregiver to being the wife again. Yeah. But, you know, even yeah. as the wife again, you're still the caregiver. You yeah. know, we talked about this last week on our show that you're always a caregiver for as long as they're with us because you oversee everything yes. and you're still making sure that the, his bills get paid and you're still making sure he <laughs> has, you know, clo new clothes if he needs it. Yeah. And you're still the, you're still giving that care. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, you have people that are helping you and being the wife again, you know, you can concentrate on that. And as you go through this disease process with your wonderful husband you know he's not the person that he was yeah and you're watching this and i i know that it's hard and it really is hard. yeah yeah and uh i think lorraine and i you know well i only cried once this week <laughs> you know uh, well i was crying twice this week or then he did this you know and it's just i i i don't know i assume that you get over this you know that soon i won't cry all the time but you know, everyone's, that hasn't happened. <laughs> everyone's journey is different and everybody handles it in a yeah. different way. So, you know, there's no right or wrong and there's no way to know not only, you know, what the next thing is going to happen because we, we can't see around the corner. You know, we take yeah. it day by day and we don't know what the next change is going to be just as you don't know now how it's going to be for you and how you're going to feel yeah. and so you know it is what it is and we deal with it the best we can on a day-to-day -day basis because things can change day to day um thank you carol for that i'm, I'm no don't be sorry um you know what it's yeah. natural it's a natural thing it's your it's feelings and we love we love our loved ones and we hate to see them, you know, in our eyes suffer, um, although they don't know that they are because they're in a different world. And, you know, most of the time they're very happy in their little world. But, um, y you know, thank you yeah. so much for sharing. Um, Lorraine, what about you? What's the <laughs> hardest part for you now that how long has uh, Harv been diagnosed? He's been diagnosed five years. Mm -hmm. I moved him into Arden Courts three months ago. Mm -hmm. So this has been a hard adjustment. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, start to. Mm -hmm. Here you go. <laughs> Pass the Kleenexes, please. <laughs> the Kleenex. um, <laughs> you know, you go to sleep at night and he's not there. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, um, But I know he's being cared for. You know, it, it got to the point where Taking care of him <clears throat> too many hours of the day, not getting sleep, because unfortunately, they don't have a time cycle like you and I do. And his day would start at 2 a.m. Wow. <laughs> yeah. and that meant your day started at 2 a.m. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was just exhausting me. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but I still miss him. Of course you do. Yeah. So the hard part is being away from him. You've probably never been separated in your whole life and, and not like never. this. And <laughs> and now, you know, it's it's a separation and um, you're alone. And, you know, we have to learn how to take care of ourselves, you know, without that other um, person there. You know, they, they can't be there for us. Um, and we have to learn how to be, to be alone. And being alone is... Um, is is hard, you know, and um, there's difference between being alone and being lonely, and and people mm -hmm. talk about that, but it, it is an adjustment, and you you know, it's another natural um, part of life, another adjustment is learning how to mm -hmm. be alone without that long term spouse that 
you know, was always there for us. So thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that. We're going to take a last commercial break and we'll be right back. Do you need the advice of an elder law attorney, but perhaps find it difficult or overwhelming getting to appointments? The solution is the Elder Law Department. They bring elder law to you by meeting with you in the comfort of your own surroundings to discuss your personal situation and family needs. In practice since 1994, Heidi Friedman is a member of the Elder Law section of the Florida Bar. She and her team help families with issues that include incapacity and estate planning, asset preservation, veterans benefits, and other legal issues that seniors may face. Call the Elder Law Department at 954-383-1143. 954-383-1143. They bring elder law to you. Make First Choice your first choice for home health care. First Choice is state certified for Medicare covered services such as medical treatment and rehabilitation. Qualified health care professionals come to your home and work closely with your doctor to build a care plan designed to get you back on your feet as soon as possible. Founded and operated by registered nurses, First Choice Home Health is dedicated to providing exceptional home health care. Their highly skilled medical professionals have the knowledge and ability to provide patients quality care. Call First Choice Home Health at 561-296-2770. That's 561-296-2770. And tell them you want them as your first choice. Arden Courts is not just a place to live. It's a place to call home. Residential living combined with quality caregiving. This is the philosophy behind Arden Courts. Communities created exclusively for individuals with Alzheimer's disease and related dementia who would benefit from a safe and structured environment. For additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides, call 888-478-2410 to locate a community nearest you. Inquire about our educational seminars, resource library, or support groups, or simply feel free to ask questions you may have about Alzheimer's and related dementias. At Arden Courts, we know, we understand, and we can help because memory care is all we do. Remember, call 888-478-2410 for additional information about any of the unique services Arden Courts provides. You are listening to your host, Marsha Teal, an Alzheimer's disease and dementia care expert on caregiversolutions.info. If you have a question or wish to share a story, call into the show at 888-565-1470 and talk with Marcia. Now, back to Caregiver Solutions. Hi, and we're here with Carol Farrell and Lorraine Abel sharing their heart with us about uh, their husbands. Both of them have dementia, uh, one with Alzheimer's, one with frontal temporal lobe, and the struggles um, that they've been facing over the last several years. Um, thank you again. It's uh, not easy, and I'm sorry to make you cry um, <laughs> with uh, talking about the hardest part, but yeah. it is hard, and it's raw emotions, and it's something that no one can really understand, and I think unless they walk in your shoes. And yeah. that's what we're doing. We're, we're letting people know that you're not alone. Uh, you're walking this path, dealing with dementia with a loved one. Uh, you're, you're definitely not alone. People have walked the path before you. And unfortunately, until we get a cure, people will walk the path after you. And so that's why we're desperately trying to educate people and trying to find a cure uh, to eradicate this terrible disease. So that being said, and we all agree that it's hard and you've expressed, you know, some of the hardest things that you all deal with. Um, how do you cope? What do you do? How, how do you deal with us on a day-to-day -day basis? What's, what do you... I keep busy. I just, I um, have, have been playing tennis for, for a while, and, and I'm a captain of a tennis team, so I use that. I read, so that a lot of books I read... The, today of course are are on this disease and and uh You're still educating yourself continuing. about mm -hmm. yeah i uh, go on the internet and uh, see what research is going on out there um 
Just, That'll keep you busy all the time, yeah. just doing that, you know, just checking the internet and scrolling and surfing the net. And, and, and the fact that you're doing tennis is good for a couple reasons, not, not only that you enjoy it, but it's good physical exercise, yeah, which right. is good for caregivers. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's also a social time that you have with your, exactly. with your teammates. That's yeah. really good. And then I have, as I mentioned before, amazing friends that constantly are calling me and and asking me to do things, you know. And do you say no when you don't feel like it? I have, Okay, yes, good, because we talked about the, <laughs> the power of no, you know, don't want to, you know, schedule too much because you, you know, need some downtime. Right. How do you cope, Carol? Um, well, I'm not coping as well. <laughs> um, um, my mother has, um, is still with us. She's 96. Mm, God bless her. And she... Um, hurt her back. She had a back problem and she was very incapacitated for almost six months. So I would go from him to her and back to feed the dog and him to oh her. My. And we found a, a um, she's had some epidurals and whatever. It's leveled off. So I'm not at with her every moment so you're um, torn between yeah, you know here I'm, and there I'm and every sandwich person you oh, know my goodness you know so um but uh, my daughter is here and you know and i have family and stuff but i i need to go play tennis or something <laughs> uh, you know i need to do i walk the dog that's about it and, all right well you're getting out there yeah. and you know you can meet people walking the dog and you know the fact that the two of you met and yeah. formed a friendship <laughs> and you have support with with you know, people that are walking in your shoes. Um, both of your husbands live in memory care assisted living. How did you know when it was time to make that change from being at home with them to letting go and letting someone else help you? How did you come to terms with that and how did you know, um, Lorraine? Well, it took a while. <laughs> um, I decided to be proactive and I researched several communities uh, that provided memory care. And I did that thinking, well, I'd rather have the knowledge of where I would want to move Harv at the point in time I felt I could no longer cope with it. So I did my homework and uh, then I put in a deposit to say, okay, we're getting to that point, but I'm not quite ready I'm yet. I'm close, but yeah. not there yet. Yeah. Okay. Right. And um, and actually, we, I mean, you've already <laughs> said it, that he does live at Arden Courts right. uh, yeah. with us, and, yeah. and you and I had been talking, and so I'm very familiar with that <laughs> thought process because yes. I was right there with you. Yes. You called a couple of times to say there's an opening, and I said, no, I don't think I'm quite ready yet. I think yet. I'll pass, <laughs> which is right. your yeah. prerogative. And someone said to me, oh, you shouldn't pass because they'll, they'll put you at the back of the list. And, you, the, you know, when you really need it, <laughs> they won't have a, a place for you. I said, no, I, it'll be okay because even if they don't have a place at the time I feel I'm ready to let go, I could still cope a little longer. Mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that was my, my feeling. But mm -hmm. I think my breaking point was the fact that um, the, the getting up in the middle of the night and just not being able to get sufficient rest to be able to take care of him for the, the entire day, you know. Your energy, just, you're just yeah. depleted of your energy, your physical, your emotional, right. your mental. And you, you requires taking care of somebody with this disease an incredible amount of patience between the repetition and the, the lack of bodily functions. Yep. Um, you know, it's... it's that, you know, and whether he wants to leave your home and he doesn't want you to come with him, um, you know, always worrying about... Worrying about wandering off, yeah. Right. Carol, what about yeah. you? How did you come to terms with when it was time? Um, actually, I was in a support group, and so they kept saying every time I would come up with something, they'd be going, oh, 
I don't know, you know. So she, I had a list, and I went to 15 different places. 15? Yeah, uh, 15. And you ended up at? I went at, down at Arden. At Arden I went course. down the whole list. I went to nine. nine. <laughs> wow. There you go. Um, and, um, but the incontinence was so, because Eric would say, well, it, the whole thing was, is you're my wife, you shouldn't be doing this. Oh. And um, he'd say, no, no, no. You're, he realized yeah, what he you realized were doing for him. That I was, mm -hmm. you know, taking on that. So I, I had a choice. I mean, I, either I have somebody um, at a community to take care of him, or I have to hire somebody to come in. And the round the clock, setting your home up, doing all of that is so much more. Mm hmm than taking them to some place that, especially when you find the right one. So well, I didn't have any, you know, I was. Yeah, you did choice between staying yes. at home with help in the home versus right. coming into mm -hmm. a community. There's pros and cons with that. And, and you're right, you don't have your privacy at yeah. home. Sometimes the, the caregiver, you know, you're not only taking care of your spouse, yes. but you're overseeing exactly. the person who's supposed to be taking care of them. And that yeah. now you're looking after the, two people. Two people, right. Yeah. Yes. So it could be a no. lot more stressful. And and thank you both for choosing <laughs> Art and Course for your husbands because um, you all are awesome and your husbands are awesome. Yeah, and are. I, um, I personally get to enjoy both of them, you know, every day when I uh, am at work and see them. And um, we love them both very, very much. And we love you. And um, thank you for all of that and for sharing. Um, we, we have one um, second left and we're going to be off uh, this air. Oh. <laughs> so I have to tell well, thank our, you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and I have to tell our viewers, thank you for watching. If you need us, give us a call and tune in next week. Same time, same place. And in the meantime, don't forget, give someone a hug. See you then. Thanks for joining us for this week's Caregiver Solutions with Marsha Teal. Join us next week as Marsha, who has 15 years of Alzheimer's disease and dementia care experience, brings you more needed information to help with the care of your loved one. This show can be seen again on caregiversolutions.info and questions can be left on the site, which may be used on the program to help others. See you next week for more Caregiver Solutions. The opinions expressed.